Sometimes to create our details and do our structural designs, we need to cut a section through the model of our building. To do this, we need to activate the Section tool. Now we can find Section underneath View up here on the ribbon. Now the reason why it happens to be underneath View is because we're going to be creating a Section view of our model. So go ahead and select on Section up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the actual Section symbol and have it go through our building. And where I'd like to put this section symbol is going to be where A and B are located at. And I'm going to start by being over here on the right-hand side when I place it. Now, I could be over on the left. It's not going to really matter the direction that I go with this. But I'm just choosing over on the right-hand side. Next, I'm going to move over to the left. And then click again when I get close to the A and the B. Now we can see that our section symbol is here and in place. We can see that this dashed lines are showing up over here. And what these dashed lines actually sort of indicate is really two different things. One is, is how far back the section goes, and two is the very fact that the section is pointing in that direction. If we happen to click off of the section right now, we'll see that those dashed lines go away because we don't want them to print. But if we would ever highlight back on the section again, we'd see those dashed lines again. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that section that we just created. And we have a couple different ways we can go about doing it. One way would be to come over to the left-hand side on the project browser and then find that section that we just created. The other thing that we could do, though, would be to select on the actual section symbol itself, right-click, and we could go to View. I'll also bring up the fact that if you double-click on the circular part of the section symbol really fast, it'll also take you to the view. So I selected on the section symbol, right-clicked, and then went to View. Now, this happens to be a section of our building, and this is a dynamically updating section. What that means is, is if I make any changes to the section symbol, it'll automatically change what we're seeing here inside of our section view. In order to be able to illustrate that, let's go back to our plan view and do something to this section symbol. So, I'm going to come up here to the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to click on this X right here. Next, we can see here's the section symbol. It has a little double arrows that ends up showing up up here, right? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select on the section and then click on the little double arrows that shows up. You notice that box? And I said that that box sort of indicates the direction that the section is pointing in. Well, when we click the double arrows, it flipped that to the other side. Technically, it also flipped the section head showing the direction with this arrow that this view is actually pointing in. But because we've done that, you'll now notice that this staircase, which is over here, well, it's not over on this side, which means if we go to the section, we should no longer be able to see the staircase. So I'm going to go ahead and select on the single line. I'm going to right click and then go to view. You notice how the staircase is now gone? The reason is, is it's not between the section symbol and the dashed lines of that box anymore. So as a result of that, just by flipping the section, we can change how the section displays. I'm going to go ahead and go back to that section view, or actually back to the elevation view to look at the section symbol. Now, if we want to be able to flip this to go to the other side, all we have to do is be able to select on the symbol, click on the little double arrows that shows up right here, and now we can see that it's now flipped it back to the other side. Now, one of the other things that I had mentioned, kind of offhand when we first started this, was that this dash line here also indicates the depth that the section is going to be taking. So it's not only the direction, but how deep the section can go. What this means is if I click on these double arrows and pull it back like this, we're not going to be able to see very much inside of our section view. The reason is, is that our columns aren't inside of this little box we have right here. Neither is our staircase. So as a result of that, if we would happen to right click and then decide to, all right, we're going to go to our view again, only those items that are inside of that little dash box there are showing up. As a result of this, this actually gives us quite a bit of power. What it means is we can only see those things in this section that we want to be able to see. So if there's a lot of stuff in the background that we don't want to see, we think it just might be getting in the way, it doesn't have to be inside of our section view. Now, of course, the power of our section views is to be able to do nice sections through the building and see the physical relationships between the different parts of the structure. In fact, if I would zoom in here right now so we can see a little bit better, we can start to see where the floor is sitting on the different beams that we have going through here. We can see the column grids. We can see different thicknesses of different materials. 
and that's all contained inside of our section views. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the little X that's showing up right here. We can still see that the section symbol is pointing down. Now a couple other properties that are available with this section symbol. One is this little break tool that shows up right here. I call it the little break tool because it looks like the old standard architectural break symbol. If we go ahead and uh, zoom in here and click on this little break tool, what it actually does is it splits this line into two pieces. It doesn't affect how the section actually works, but I know that some people like to see this symbology where they only see a part of this line going through their drawings. So you can absolutely create that condition just by clicking on the section symbol. Also, if I uh, click back on the section symbol again and then click back on that little break, it'll automatically heal itself again. Now so we can see a little bit more level of detail, I'm going to once again select on this little double arrow that shows up here on the dash lines, and then just pull this out so we can see more of our building. Now, there's one more thing really to show on these section symbols. Actually, there's two more things. The first thing is going to be the split element tool, which will appear whenever you have the section symbol highlighted. Now, if we select on split element, it's going to allow us to split this section symbol into two or more pieces. This is what that means. If I decided to click right here, and then I held my mouse button down, I can start to split this section in either like the left-hand side, the right-hand side, pull one side up, pull one side down. One of the advantages to being able to do this is perhaps all we wanted to be able to see is the items that are going in this area right here. And I just hit escape two times to get out of the command. Or maybe if I wanted to just select back on this again, maybe I just didn't want to see the stairs in this section, but I wanted to see everything else. Whenever we're going to be doing this section, it's going to automatically generate a section based on what's between these dash lines and this line right here. So as a result of that, what we're going to see is we're going to see these three columns here. We're not going to see the staircase. And then we're going to see these two columns here. You're not going to really be able to tell the difference between the columns other than the fact that maybe part of this column might be partially hidden by the staircase. It kind of depends on how far out the staircase goes and whether or not it gets in front of the column or not. So in order to be able to do this, we can just select on the section symbol, right click again and go to view. And you can see how it's sort of cutting through here and we're not seeing the staircase. Go ahead and close this view down. I don't really like to have these breaks in my sections too often, so I'm just going to click on it, click on the double arrows, pull it back up. It'll automatically heal itself whenever you get them in line with one another. In fact, it'll even feel like they're snapping together, so you'll know when they're in a straight line. And you can just let go now, and it'll show up as being one healed section going through the building. Now, the last thing I wanted to do is these little circles showing up here at the ends. And if you click on the little circles, what they're going to allow you to do is flip through the different section head options that we have available to us. So if we'd rather have the circular side down here, if we'd rather have this little tick or slash mark down here at the end, we could definitely do that. One last thing I'll point out is that you're not just limited to the one end getting moved. And when I say the one end, we use the split tool and we're just moving the one side. We can always use our move command in order to be able to click onto it and just pull it back, pull it forward, or move this to any location that we needed to have it at. So our sections are dynamically updating tools, which allow us to see otherwise hidden details and uh, be able to document conditions, which we might need to be able to document in order to be able to construct our buildings.